What's going on everybody? My name is Greg Peters. You are watching the Car Passion channel and in this giant box behind me, I've got a fiberglass racing hardtop from Treasure Coast Miata, along with what they call the street kit, which is what enables you to run this racing part on your street car. Now these things look awesome. They're super lightweight and not as expensive as you might think, especially with the price of OEM Mazda hardtops getting more expensive by the day. This is gonna become a great option for a lot of people. But before I get into the details and the pros and cons of running a top like this on your Miata, I can't wait to crack this open and see what's inside. Now, of course, the shell of this top is incredibly lightweight, but once it's all assembled, how will it compare to an OEM hardtop? And lucky for you guys, I just happen to have one of those on hand. So I'll be able to compare the weight of this to an OEM top, as well as the streetability of it. This is a racing part. It's not designed for streetability. It's designed to be lightweight and functional. So how does this compare to driving with an OEM top? And how does this compare to driving with a soft top? Because of course I've got one of those on the NB. So this is really gonna be a great comparison video. I can't wait to get this thing on the car. So here's how to put it together. All right, I hope you got yourself a plate of tacos because we got a lot of steps to follow in order to build one of these tops, but the end result is awesome, I promise. So we're gonna start with possibly one of the scariest parts of the whole build, and that is drilling the hole for the rear window. Now, I'm gonna show you the steps to go through first in order to drill the holes, and I actually messed this step up a little bit, but I remedied it later in the video. But I'm gonna show you a pro tip on how you can avoid making the same mistake that I did. So start off by dropping the window into the top and the side with all the dots on it needs to face outwards towards you. The dots are your template for where you need to drill through both the window and the top for the mounting bolts. This step is definitely easier with multiple people, but it's possible to do with one person as shown here. And the most important part is that the window is centered both left to right and up and down. And that's where I got it a little bit off, but I'll show you how to avoid that in just a second. Once you get it approximately where you think it needs to go, you can use some masking tape to really hold it in place. And then once you have it taped in, make sure to press the corners of the windows down and make sure they still have even alignment on the left and right sides. Then you're ready to drill your first hole, which is gonna be the top center hole. At that point, you can put the bolt through and then check the rotational alignment of the window as well as the left to right alignment. And then once that baby is really where you want it, you can tape it down and hold that thing in place. The next hole you drill is gonna be the bottom center hole. You need to drill the holes from the center outwards, as I'm showing here. And every couple screws that go in, you need to recheck the alignment of the window. If it doesn't line up, you have to go back and re-drill until the window has pretty much perfect alignment. If you do need to re-drill anything, make sure you don't re-drill the window. You're only drilling a new hole in the top itself. So just use the hole that is already in the window as a guide and then put the new hole into the fiberglass. Once I got everything drilled, I did put the nuts on the very outer bolts just to hold the window in place so I could give it a visual inspection and make sure everything looked good. Once you're done there, you can take the window back out and set it aside for later. So the slight mistake I made while doing this is when I was drilling some of the bottom holes, I noticed that the holes themselves in the fiberglass shell were getting close to the edge of the lip that the window sits in. So I thought it would be a good idea to drill the holes slightly lower in the window. You can see my hole is slightly offset from the template. So it would catch some more of that fiberglass material. Now, really what I should have done is had the window itself slightly 
lower in the frame. And that causes me a bit of a headache later in the video, which I'll show you how I fixed it. But my solution to this would have been setting the top down, setting the window in and putting a bright light underneath the top shining outwards so you can see the lip through the window as you're drilling and you can make sure you're not getting too close to that edge. If you drill the hole too close to the edge of the window, it interferes with the trim that you'll be putting on later. The next step is to install the weather stripping for the window and as you can imagine, it's pretty important to get this step right because this is what keeps water on the outside of your car from becoming water on the inside of your car. So you're gonna start by cleaning the frame very well. This does use a double-sided adhesive. It's very strong, but the surface does have to be clean and dry. Next up, take a Sharpie and make a little tick mark right on the underside of the fiberglass lip where every one of those holes are because you're gonna have to punch holes through the weather strip for the screws to go through. The kit includes two pieces of weather stripping, one for the top of the window and one for the bottom. You just start by peeling off the protective paper and lining the border of the fiberglass and you wanna push it down pretty hard to make sure that double-sided adhesive is sticking well. The two strips are gonna meet at the bottom corners of the window like this, and if you have any extra, you can just razor blade it off, but you wanna make sure that these pieces actually are touching each other so they make a good seal. Next, you need to punch holes through the weather stripping in order for the window screws to get through. So using your Sharpie marks, you could either use a nail or a razor blade to make a tiny hole, and then I just took a screw and did a test fit all around there so I knew it wouldn't give me any trouble later when I was actually installing the window. Now, some of you may have noticed that the finish on the fiberglass is not exactly perfect. It's got some little blemishes and in case you're not familiar with buying fiberglass body parts, it is not intended to be a finished product out of the box, but you can paint it and get it finished up so it does look that way. But the tops are offered in both white and black gel coat and I personally think the black looks just fine on a lot of different colors of cars, so it's just something to keep in mind. All right, anyways, I'll get into more of the pros and cons of this top and what it's like to street drive it and pretty much any other question I could think of at the end of this video. For now, let's continue continue building it. The next thing you have to do is paint the border of the window. Now that sounds scary, but they make it pretty easy for you. So you flip it over so the clear protective film is facing up and there's a pre-cut line to where you can remove just the border or just the part that you're going to be painting. So go ahead and peel that off. Give that border a good scuff all the way around and then once you clean it, it's ready to be painted. You can really use any paint that's safe on plastic, but it's kind of nice to use a black primer here because it does dry so quickly. And even if it's a matte black primer, it's still going to look gloss because this is actually on the bottom side of the window. So once you peel the protective layer from the outside, you're going to see the gloss of the window itself. After the paint has fully dried, you can then peel off the center of the protective layer and reveal that beautifully clean cut border. This, I'm not going to lie, was highly satisfying to watch. And just be careful because the surface of this window is pretty easy to scratch. And once you remove the other protective layer, you can see how beautifully clean this window actually is and notice how I have it set on microfiber towels because like I said it's easy to scratch. Now the next step here is to install the trim around the window. The trim uses a double-sided 3M adhesive and it's really best to get this right the first time because that adhesive kind of only works once well. The trim has kind of an L shape and you're going to want this lip to sit up against the window which is much easier to visualize than me telling you how to do it so check this out right here. And I accidentally started at the top of the window when Treasure Coast recommends that you start at the bottom of the window so that's where your cut is. But at any rate, go ahead and trace the entire border of the window with your trim. You're going to come all the way back around to where you started and when you cut this, you actually want to make it a tiny bit longer than you think it needs to be because I've heard that it shrinks very slightly so you can kind of compress it and then butt the two ends up together and it will come together and look clean like this. All right, now it's time to drop your beautiful window into the top and bolt it in permanently. And this is where I ran into a little bit of an issue with the screw heads interfering with the window trim, as you can see right here. Now, as I showed earlier, some of my holes were drilled slightly off of the template. 
So those were definitely interfering with the trim, but even the holes that were drilled right on target with the template had slight interference issues. So you have a couple options here. You can either use a screw with a slightly smaller head or you can modify the trim so the existing screws fit better. And I chose the latter. It was pretty easy to do and this is what it looks like. Using a Dremel and a small sanding drum, I used the holes in the window as a, a guide to center the tool and then I just made a small round cutout in the trim where necessary. Now I didn't have to do this with all the screws, just a few of them, but the method that I used worked really well and personally I think it's clean enough. Once any interference issues are sorted out, you can put all the screws in and just slightly thread the nuts on. Once everything's in, you can tighten down the nuts in the same order that you drilled the holes, starting from the center and going outwards, and you absolutely do not want to over tighten these. Don't crank them down. You just want to make them tight enough to compress the weather strip slightly to make sure that water can't get through. And they come with nylon lock nuts, so you don't have to worry about these coming loose because of vibration or anything. The next step is to do the window seals and this part is also kind of scary because it involves drilling holes in the right places otherwise water is going to come inside your car but there are two different methods two different sets of parts you can use to accomplish this and I'm going to show you how to do it both ways right here so one way to do it is to use your old soft top window seals and rails and install those on the new fiberglass hardtop to do this first you have to remove the old seals from your soft top as well as as the rails that they attach to. So the middle seal just pulls right off. The front seal pulls most of the way off, but you do have to pop the soft top up to reveal these two Phillips head screws. Remove those, then you can take the seal out. For the back seal, I didn't realize this because my seals were actually torn, but there's a small rivet that goes underneath this seal that holds it in the base of it. Once you remove your seals, the rails are easy to take off with just some Phillips head screws. Now, as I mentioned a second ago, my seals are in pretty bad shape here. Here, but what I realized after installing the actual rails into the top is they were also completely mangled. I thought maybe they just didn't fit that well, but something happened to these rails in their past. So that made it considerably more difficult to get this step right. I'm still going to walk you through the steps and show you how to do it. And if your rails are in the shape that they're supposed to be, it's going to be a lot easier for you. But in the case that yours are mangled like mine, stay tuned for the alternate method of doing window seals, which will be in just a couple minutes. So first you need to install the seals onto the rails. Once those are on, you can take the whole assembly and put it onto the top the way that it will be on the car. When everything is in place here, you need to start by marking the front rail, put a mark on the rail and on the top to kind of show the alignment and then pull the seal off of it. And that's where the rail is gonna sit. You can then drill the holes into the fiberglass of the top, which you can use the factory screws that held the rails onto your soft top to now hold the rails onto this hard top. Now, if you don't drill everything perfectly, the rails do have some adjustability because the holes in them are slotted, but you wanna to try to get it as close as possible. After you get those three holes drilled, you can install the front rail and the seal itself. And you're also gonna to have to drill two holes in the front of the top, which will secure the front of the seal, the part that mates up to the A-pillar, and then just follow the same procedures for the center seal and then the rear slash bottom seal. You wanna do your best to install the rails so that when you put the seals on, they are kind of pushing against each other where the splits are because that's really going to help keep water out when it rains. The other option for window seals is to use these one piece adhesive seals from Treasure Coast. And this was filmed a little bit out of order because the top does have to be on the car in order to install these seals properly. It's important to note that this adhesive really only works once. So after it's been stuck to the top, that's it. You can't pull it off and redo it. So I did some test fitting before removing the protective paper, starting at the front here, just opening and closing the door, rolling the window up and down. And then with the window up and the door closed, I did one final test fit to kind of see where this thing was 
was going to sit. And then while pushing it lightly against the window, I pulled off the protective paper and let it stick to the top. After it's, you know, pretty much in place, you want to give it a good push to let that adhesive really set in and you're done. That is literally it. And since these seals are custom fit to your top and the way that the top sits on your car, it's pretty easy to get it to where there are no gaps at all. The next couple steps are pretty easy. You have the deck trim, which is the same trim that the window uses. It's got that L shape with the double-sided adhesive and it's just going to stick to the outside edge of the hard top to give it a nice finished look. And then you have the deck seal. So I set this thing in place all the way and kind of center it up and then peel back the protective paper and start to stick it. And you're going to want to run it just on the inside edge of the hard top. And since that's kind of at an angle, it'll stick down a little bit. And this is what's going to seal the top to the trunk area and keep water out of there. All right, we finally get to install the top. Now, first of all, check out my matching NB2 taillights, courtesy of the Treasure Coast Miata used parts inventory. Thank you, boys. All right, so there are two methods to install this, one of which retains the factory soft top and one of which deletes it. So I'll overview that in just a second, but either way, you're gonna have to remove the front strikers from the car. It just takes two Torx bolts and you're gonna replace those with the solid hardtop brackets and leave the bolts loose for now just so you can realign everything once you put the top onto the car. All right, don't worry, I weighed everything. I'll get into the weights and all that good information at the end of the video. But for now, put the hard top on the car. I'm gonna loosely put the front bolts in and then the way you secure the back of the top to the car, if you have the soft top in place, you're gonna take these turnbuckle dealios here and this bottom hook is actually gonna hook onto the soft top frame. And then you'll be able to tighten down the turnbuckle and compress that deck seal. If you've removed the soft top, which I imagine most people doing when you install this racing top, included with the kit are these long bolts that thread into a threaded hole from where the soft top used to be. When you thread that bolt in, you can then hook the turnbuckle onto that. And then you can go ahead and tighten everything down. I did have to kind of push the top into place as I tighten the front bolts. And you guys that watch most of my videos know that this NB was crashed. It's not perfectly straight. So I was a little worried about the top fitting right, especially because I did have fitment issues with the soft top. But surprisingly, this thing actually fits pretty well. So here's some direct comparison shots between how the Treasure Coast top fits on the NB versus how my OEM top fits on my NA, which has not been crashed. The windshield line matches up perfectly. And then you go to the back and it sits tightly to the deck and there's no gaps. And I'm actually pretty impressed. And just a little tip for installing the top. For me, it was much easier to tighten down all the front bolts first, get that lined up. And then you can just tighten down the turnbuckles in the back. If you tighten the back down first, it's hard to get all the holes in the front to line up. Now you might notice after the the installation of your hard top that the windows don't line up. On my car, the driver's side, the window was too high and on the passenger side, there was a massive gap. Now this could have partly to do with the fact that the car's crooked or that the rails that hold the seals on were completely mangled and impossible to install. But nonetheless, it is possible that your windows will not line up perfect, but lucky for you, there's a remedy and that is realigning your windows, which is a very simple process. All you gotta do is open your door, remove the door panel, Panel, and down inside the door, there are two window stops. These two stops dictate exactly how the window will sit when it's fully rolled up, and they are very adjustable. Once you peel back the protective layer, it'll expose these two bolts that sit inside of slotted holes. You just need to crack those things loose, and then where the window sits will be adjustable. You can see when I roll the window up, it actually pushes the stops higher. So on the passenger side, I'm absolutely maxing these things out and making the window go up quite a bit higher. Once you have the window at the desired location, you can tighten those bolts down again, and it might take a little bit of trial and error. So I definitely made it significantly better, but there's still a small gap on the passenger side, and that's pretty much due to how the window seal was actually installed. And also note that at this point of filming, I still had the original soft top seals on the top. I had not put the one piece seals in yet at this point. So chronologically, this is filmed a little bit out of order, but this problem is actually what made me go 
go to the one piece seals. All right, so let's discuss some of the pros and cons of the fiberglass racing top from Treasure Coast Miata, starting with the price. Now you can get this top configured just like you saw it on my car with the street kit and all the fixings you need to put it onto your street car for about $950. Now that's if you're fortunate enough to pick it up locally in Florida. Of course, there will be shipping costs involved if you have to get it shipped. And that ranges anywhere from two to $300, depending on if you get it shipped to your house or shipped to a business like a body shop. So all in all, you still can get this top shipped for just under $1,200. Now, of course you do have to factor paint into that if you're gonna match it to your car. Like I said, the top is available in both black and white, but it is an unfinished surface. What about the weight? Now I weighed the OEM hardtop from my red car and it came in at 40 pounds, not including the latches because I have a solid mount kit. So you're looking at about 45 pounds with latches. The fiberglass race top comes in at 20 pounds. So not only are you shaving 25 pounds from a factory hardtop, you're shaving it from the most important part of the car and that is the top. You're lowering the center of gravity and that's gonna have the biggest effect on handling from any other location in the car that you could remove that weight from. And that's about 1% of the weight of a Miata. So if your car makes 250 horsepower and you were to swap out an OEM hardtop for this top, you're looking at about a two and a half horsepower gain. whoop dee but hey, every little bit counts and you're getting better handling and braking as well. The soft top for reference that I pulled off of the NB and mind you, this is the plastic window soft top. So it is the lighter one still weighs 29 pounds. So the race top is even lighter than a soft top. And as much as I'm considering putting this top onto my red car, like it really needs to be any faster. Well, it kind of does. But anyways, I think I'm going to stick with the OEM top. I mean, it's already paint matched and it already fits perfect and everything. So I think I'm going to leave that alone. But I am thinking about maybe one of those fiberglass race trunks. Treasure Coast offers a bunch of different super lightweight fiberglass racing parts, including uh, hard tops for NCs, fiberglass doors, fiberglass hoods, and all kinds of stuff. So you can find that on their website, treasurecoastmiata.com. Oh, and side note, if you do end up buying anything from them, it would help me out if you just kind of drop my name into the notes so they know where you guys came from. So let's talk about the streetability of this top against say an OEM soft top or hard top. I've had this on my car for about six weeks, so I've put a good amount of miles on it by now. And the very first thing I noticed when I took the car out, particularly getting on the freeway, is the wind noise. Going from an OEM soft top to a hard top in general, you get a drastic reduction in wind noise. Now, I can't really say there's much of a difference between the OEM hardtop and the fiberglass top as far as wind noise because they have the same shape. So there's really not gonna be much difference there as long as you do your window seals correctly on the fiberglass top. And luckily, although it's rare, we did get some pouring rain here in San Diego recently, which definitely scared me at first because I was like, uh, I really don't know what I'm doing as far as putting window seals in. But luckily, climbed inside the car and all around that back window completely dry. So anyways, happy to report dry interior. Some people talk about the insulation of the fiberglass top, uh, like it has less insulation than an OEM top, but Miatas don't have any insulation anywhere really. So I mean, what? it's not a Lexus, okay? So yes, it's a little bit thinner. Now granted, I don't live in a super cold climate, but I wouldn't wanna drive an NA or an NB period in any super cold climate. So the thickness of the top would not be like a deciding factor for me. And then one downside of course is you're not gonna be able to remove it quickly like you would an OEM top with latches where you just undo the four latches and pull the top off because the Treasure Coast top, you do have to bolt it on. So it requires some tools and it takes a few extra minutes to take it off. So that's about all I got for you as far as assembling and installing the Treasure Coast Miata fiberglass racing hardtop. If you guys do have any questions that I didn't address in this video, go ahead and drop them down in the comments below. Smash that like button if you learned something and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.